Okay, in this video, we're gonna start off by looking at this differential equation, looking at some sort of invariance property of this differential equation, and use that fact to solve a related differential equation. So let's first notice that um, the derivative with respect to y of y equals one, and that's also the derivative with respect to x of x. So in other words, this is an exact differential equation. So among all the ways that we could solve this, it's also separable. Um, and we could also use first order linear strategy, but in, in, in addition to all those methods that we could use to solve this differential equation, it is an exact differential equation. So the next thing we want to do is describe functions mu of xy. So these are functions potentially of two variables x and y such that mu times y plus mu times x y prime equals zero is exact. Where I've suppressed my dependence of mu on x and y in this last writing of the equation, but it's still there. So we want that to be exact. So that's our next goal, and as an application of describing these functions mu, we'll solve a related differential equation. Okay, good. So now what we'll do is look at the partial of all of this with respect to y, mu times y, the partial of all of this with respect to x, mu times x, and decide when those are equal, and thus this new related differential equation is exact. So let's look at that. So we have the derivative with respect to y of mu times y. And we want that to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of mu times x. Good. So that's going to give us the partial with respect to y of mu times y plus the function mu. And that's equal to the partial with respect to x of mu times x plus, again, the function mu. So it's easy to see that we can cancel off the mu's on both sides of the equation. And we are left with y times mu of y, the partial of mu with respect to y, equals x times mu sub x. So we're not going to prove that these solutions that I'm about to write down are all of the solutions, but they will be some solutions. Um, <clears throat> but notice that taking a partial derivative with respect to y decreases the exponent of y by 1 if um, it is like some sort of polynomial or some sort of power of y. And then we're multiplying the power of y back. So the degree on the left-hand side with respect to y is the same. We've decreased it by one here, and we've increased it by one here, and same uh, in terms of x on the right-hand side. So that gives us some motivation to choose mu of xy equal xy, the quantity, to the n power. And notice that this function will indeed satisfy this equation. So if we take y times mu of y, that's going to give us y times x to the n times y to the n minus 1 times n, which I'll put in front. In other words, that is n xy to the n, or n times our original mu. And likewise, since this function is symmetric in x and y, that will be exactly equal to x times mu sub x. So multiplying our original exact differential equation by a function of this form, x times y to the n, will maintain its property of being an exact differential equation. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at an application of this property. 
Okay, so next we're going to consider this differential equation. So notice it's built out of some of the parts of our previous differential equation. So we have y times, or sorry, plus x times y prime equals zero, but then we have this new part, x to the fourth times y squared. So we know that if we multiply the yellow underlined by a function mu of x, y, equals x, y quantity to the n, in other words, x to the n times y to the n, then the, then the corresponding differential equation will be exact. So now that gives us some motivation for using this different, sorry, this integrating factor mu in order to transform this into an exact differential equation, which you can check very easily that this is not an exact differential equation at the moment. So let's do that. Let's multiply this differential equation by our function mu and see what happens. So that'll give us x to the n, y to the n, times the quantity y plus x to the fourth y squared, good, plus um, x to the n, y to the n, times x, y prime. So we know this is going to be equal to zero, that's our differential equation. So now combining everything, that will give us x to the n, y to the n plus 1, plus x to the n plus 4, y to the n plus 2, plus x to the n plus 1, y to the n, y prime. So this is our new differential equation. All of this equals zero. So the big goal is to find a value of n, if possible, so that we have transformed our non-exact differential equation into an exact differential equation. So let's write up that up here. So find n such that this new differential equation is exact, and then finish it off by solving this new differential equation. Good. So now we have this whole thing is playing the role of a function that I usually call A, and this whole thing is playing the role of a function of I usually call B. So what we want is the partial of A with respect to Y to be equal to the partial of B with respect to X. So let's write that out. So in other words, we have n plus 1 times x to the n, y to the n, plus n plus 2 times x to the n plus 4, y to the n plus 1, okay, good, equals, so this is our, you know, just... This is our a sub y term, so that's, that should be equal to b sub x, if possible. So that's equal to n plus 1, um, x to the n, y to the n. So that is the partial of b with respect to x. So now let's notice that we have like terms on each side of the equation. So this and this can cancel, and what we're left with is the following. So what we need is for n plus 2, x to the n plus 4, y to the n plus 1 to be equal to 0 for all values of x and y. In other words, since this has to be for all values of x and y, that means we need n to be equal to negative 2 great, but that means that our integrating factor, mu of xy, is equal to 1 over x squared y squared. Okay, good. So now that we've constructed our integrating factor, let's go back to the top so we'll clean up the board and then we will solve this differential equation once and for all. Okay, so as a brief summary, we started with this non-exact differential equation, and we derived the fact that if we use this 
value of mu, 1 over x squared times y squared, as an integrating factor, we will transform this non-exact differential equation into an exact differential equation. So let's multiply by mu and see what we get. So if we multiply this by mu, um, we'll end up with, so 1 over x squared y squared times the quantity y plus x to the fourth y squared plus um, x over x squared y squared times y prime. So this is equal to zero. So that's we multiplied our differential equation by our integrating factor. Now let's simplify everything. So that's going to give us 1 over x squared y plus x squared plus 1 over x y squared y prime equals 0. Now, on the previous board, I used these functions a and b, so I'm going to use the same letters for the functions now, but um, they'll have different values. So let's set this equal to a function a, this equal to a function b. So by our construction, we're guaranteed to have this being an exact differential equation, but let's just check so that we haven't made any mistakes. So if we take the derivative of a with respect to y, so the derivative of x squared will be 0, and this is like y to the minus 1, so that's going to give us negative 1 over x squared y squared. And then if we take the derivative of b with respect to x, we'll get the same thing. So good, so this is now exact. Great. So that means what we want to solve this differential equation is we want some function psi where the partial of psi with respect to x is equal to 1 over x squared times y plus x squared and the partial of psi with respect to y is equal to 1 over x y squared. Good. So now we can take the partial antiderivative with respect to x, and that's going to give us, so this is like x to the minus 2, so that'll give us 1 over xy plus 1 over 3 x cubed plus g of y, where that's an undetermined function of only y. Great. So now taking the partial of this with respect to y, so that's going to give us 1, sorry, I left off a minus 1 here, so that should be minus 1. So that'll give us 1 over x y squared plus g prime of y. Good. So that means that g prime of y equals a constant, sorry, equals 0, which means g of y equals some constant. <clears throat> and then I'll skip a step where I combine undetermined constants, but our solution will be implicitly defined by psi equals some constant. And so our implicit solution is one third x cubed minus one over x y equals some constant. So that is an implicit version of the solution to this differential equation, and that's our final answer.